What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, I saw Kendrick Perkins talking about this on ESPN. He said that the 2012 team, um, essentially, I'm assuming he's saying that the 2012 Olympics team is the greatest team ever assembled and that uh, they would beat the 1992 Dream Team. And, uh, you know, that's his opinion. I'm not going to sit there and chew him out for that. That's not an outlandish take. It ain't like saying the 2004 team would beat the 92 Dream Team. You know, or, you know, so I'm not really going to fault him for that. Uh, I do know this. Um, it wouldn't be easy. When you look at both teams, they were very dominant. I believe the 2012 team won by an average of 35 points a game. The 92 Dream Team won by an average of 45 points a game. Uh, the 2012 team shot 52% from the floor during the, uh, during the Olympic uh, you know, tournament. The 1992 Dream Team shot 56%. The 2012 team was better from outside as far as shooting the rock. Um, although I don't think they had a lot of marksmen per se, uh, but they did shoot better from outside. Defensively, the 92 team was better on, on both sides. Uh, when I say both sides, I mean in the paint and on the perimeter. Now, you would expect that in the paint because one of the weaknesses of the 2012 team is that they were small up front. I believe the only true center they had was Tyson Chandler. Whereas the 1992 Dream Team had, of course, David Robinson, uh, Patrick Ewan, uh, both seven-footers, and at the, at the four position, of course, all-time greats Charles Barkley and Carl Malone. Um, but on the perimeter... Uh, the 2012 team held their opponents to 33% shooting. 33% shooting, the 2012 team. But the 1992 Dream team, their perimeter held opponents to 30% shooting. So that's interesting, especially if you consider the fact that they took less three-pointers back then. So that's really interesting. Um, I believe 2012 team averaged more steals overall. Uh, the 1992 Dream Team probably was better as far as execution and basketball IQ overall. So it, it will be a close contest. I think on any given night, the 2012 team could have defeated the 92 Dream Team. Uh, I think in a, in a in a series, I give the edge to 92. I just do. Uh, most of those guys were in their primes. Uh, look, Magic was sort of getting out of his prime, but he was still a hell of a player. Bird's back was bad. Wasn't the player that he once was, but Bird still was a guy that could get you, you know, when he, when he was able to play. He was a guy that still can get you 20 points, 19 to 20 points a night, six rebounds at that stage, maybe seven, and six, seven assists a night. He still was a, a guy that was a great player. just wasn't the same bird. Um, but everybody else was in their primes, man. John Stockton, um, you know, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, Chris Mullen, Scottie Pippen, uh, Barkley, Malone, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, um, they were all in their primes, man. And, um, and I can't help but think that if I had to go with one team, I would go with the 92 team just because of the fact that that interior, you know, especially if they're playing by, well, they're playing Olympic rules, so it's different. But uh, I can't help but think 
because of the teamwork of the 92 Dream Team that they would have the edge. You know. Also, I saw a stat where the 2012 team um, allowed post players to shoot uh, at a 52% clip as opposed to the 1992 Dream Team. They allowed their opponents to only shoot 39% in the paint. And um, that's staggering. That's, I think, is going to be a decider. Definitely. You can't allow Barkley. If, you, if you're letting post players on average shoot 52%, you can't, you can't let Barkley shoot his normal percentage and higher. You can't let Barkley shoot 60-plus percent from the floor, Carl Malone 50-plus percent from the floor, Dave Robinson 55%, Ewing 53%, or whatever. You're not going to win playing like that. You know, uh, so I give the edge to the 92 Dream Team. Tell me what you guys think.